So we're over here for this film in the south of France in the beautiful Languedoc, in an area known as the Cathar country. And it's these Gnostic Christians and the crusade against them that was bloody and cruel that we're going to be concentrating on in this video. Residents of the 12th century Languedoc have been well used to seeing wandering troubadours and traders arriving in, uh, arriving in their towns and villages. And amongst them, certain pairs of travellers, recognisable by their black cloaks, tied round their waist with a leather thong. They would drive in town and set up as weavers, often or other manual workers, and earn their reputation as hard-working holy men, honest in their business dealings. They start by doing small talks around the town, and soon in these lands of freedom and tolerance, the followings of these bon Christians can be measured in their thousands. The leaders of the Cathars were known as perfects, and they believed that the world was created as evil, and that our spirits are trapped within our bodies. So to break the cycle of reincarnation, they would recite a consolamentum or a tap of last rites, the Cathars also believed that the real teachings of Christ had been lost uh, at occasions such as uh, the Council of Nicaea. They also had no regard for the finery and riches of the church and the priests. They found the idea of cross veneration as repulsive as it was the instrument of Christ's torture. And they had no uh, respect at all for the belligerent deity of the Old Testament who they regarded as being the same person as the evil creator of the earth. Now it's thought that the Cathars had a great and holy secret, a secret that would rock the very foundations of the Roman church. It was supposed to be connected to a, an ancient manuscript known as the Book of Love, a manuscript that had ancient teachings of alchemy and mystery. So whether it was to cover up the secrets of the Cathar Church or just to break the power, the answer of the Roman Church of preaching and entreaty have failed you. Now you receive the stick. So as the armies of the French marched south, Raymond Roger, Roger Truncaval, who was the Viscount of Abbey and Bézé and Carcassonne and all the lands in between and who was greatly loved by his people, he rode south to parley with Arnold Armory in Montpellier. But to get the answer, they had to produce 222 Cathars to the crusade to be punished, which of course meant to be burnt alive. The answer was swift from Roger. I'd rather drown in the salty sea to change, than change anything in my government. So as a result, on the 22nd of July, 1209, the armies of the Pope and the Northern Lords gathered for miles, uh, as far as the eye could see here below the, the wonderful city of Bézier. And then fate played its hand. One of the town workers, seeing the siege workers over the river orb, opened the door, ran out, grabbed one of the siege workers and threw him in the river orb. At this point, seeing the open door, the, the gathering hordes ran at it in their hundreds. And the siege was over before it even began. As a result, the entire 20,000 inhabitants of the population were slaughtered. The place was turned into an abattoir. Arnold Armory wrote to the Pope of the, the, the divine vengeance as being wonderful. Nearly 20,000 of the population put to the sword regarding of age or sex. An ordering of men's minds had reached another step and the Cathars had the first stick.
So having left Bézier, the Crusader forces arrived here at Carcassonne on the 1st of April. The message from Arnold Armory was clear. You, Raymond Trenkable could leave the city with 11 people of his choice. The city would then belong to the Crusades. The message came quick as reply from Raymond that he'd rather be flayed alive than to acquiesce to such a base betrayal of his people. The next day the sea's engines took hold and they were in for a long haul. The people of the city became weary in the intense heat, exasperated by the total shortage of water. And then a lone horseman arrived at the city walls, probably Raymond of Toulouse. His message to Raymond Trencothel was pleasant enough. I hope that you and your people prosper. If you think that reinforcements are likely, I recommend that you hold out for them. But I must tell you that nothing of this sort is going to happen. Raymond was then taken to the uh, pavilions of the, the Crusade under safe conduct, under parley, to negotiate. But unfortunately, Arnold Armory was in charge and Raymond was no longer a free man. The people of the city had to leave in single file. They disappeared along the rivers, into the mountains, in the intense heat and into history. The city then being empty was offered to the French lords, all of which denied, uh, didn't want the city because it was taken in uh, treachery and betrayal, not in honour. But then on the 1st of uh, August, the scourge of the Languedoc, Simon de Montfort arrived, marched into the city with an army of hundreds. He was to become the new Lord of Carcassonne and all the Trencaval lands, which he set about to subdue with crippling taxes and just out and out brutality. So when Sam de Montfort arrived here with his troops at Chateau Le Tours, he found it very difficult to be able to position his siege engines to take on these amazing castles here. So he decided on another tack. He went to the town of Bran, where he took a hundred prisoners. He set about a process of gruesome disfiguration with the prisoners. First of all, he cut off the, the noses and their ears and the top lips. He gouged out all of their eyes, apart from one prisoner, because he was allowed to keep one eye, he was going to be the group leader. And they set off in procession, arriving here at Les Tours, with the hands on the guy in front, a ghoulish procession of grimacing, walking skulls. So Simon de Montfort made his way through the Cathar country in a brutal fashion. On visiting the town of uh, Lavur, he found the dame of the city, threw her down the well while she was still alive and threw stones at her until she stopped screaming. And arriving here in Minerve, this beautiful little town, where Pliny the Elder 1200 years ago had found the wines that grew from the city walls beautiful. And they employed a whole new huge seas engine called La Moivacine and they pounded the city mercilessly. Meanwhile in Toulouse, the young Raymond VII set about leading an opposition, stating that the church had no business depriving him of his birthright. Then his father, Raymond VI, returned to the city to much celebration now we have the morning star risen and shining upon us. This is our Lord who has returned at last. Raymond ordered his people to rebuild the defences of the city. Everyone in the city answered to his call in a joint effort to match any in the history of mankind. The city of Toulouse was made ready. Then, on the 8th of October, 1217, De Montfort instigated a full attack on the city of Toulouse. 
The pulp's men could be heard shouting, let neither man nor woman escape alive. But the people of the city were determined to succumb, neither to holy sword nor to holy imprisonment under the Mont de Montfort's tyranny. As the armies fell against the prepared defences, the group of soldiers from the city rushed out and destroyed a huge siege engine and then rushed back to the city. And as de Montfort's men followed them, this left them exposed totally to the uh, archers on the city wall. It was at this time that de Montfort was hit full on the head with a payload of a mangonel operated by the city, the women of the city. Le Lop S. Mort, the wolf is dead. It was Monday, the 25th of June, 1217. The siege of the city was lifted. Cathar Perfect could be seen again around the Longer Dock area. Peace and freedom was about to reign again. Residents of the Longer Dock can still quote the final words of the Cancer de Crusada, the song of the Cathar Wars. And I have heard it said that it must be so if by killing men and spilling blood, by wasting souls and preaching murder, by following evil counsels and raising fires, by ruining noblemen and bespurching paratage, by pillaging the country and by exalting pride, by stoking up wickedness and stifling good, by massacring women and their infants, a man can win Jesus in this world, then Simon surely wears a crown resplendent in heaven. Then in 1233, the Inquisition arrived, led by the Dominicans, and it moved through the Longer Dock like the plague, burning thousands in its wake. So here we are at the base of Montsegur, a mountain of safety that became the home of nearly 500 people, including 200 Cathar perfects that had fled the Inquisition. And then in 1244, in the late spring, the armies of the, the French king and the Pope laid siege beneath, beneath the mountain here. And then on the 1st of March, 1244, a single horn was heard from the citadel wall after a 10 month bombardment the siege was lifted, it was over. The negotiations were swift, all but the Cathar Perfects could go free after a session with the Inquisition, but the Cathar Perfects had to renounce their faith and be burnt alive. It's also at this time that a highly unusual two-week truce was granted, a time where it said that four Cathar Perfects disappeared down the back of the mountain, taking the, the mystical secrets of the Cathars to a hidden a uh, cave, or a fortified cave, or a spoogler. And then two weeks later, a procession of 220 Cathars came down the mountain, bare feet and with coarse garments. They made their way to a palisade of wood where they were tied like wild boar to a spit. And as the fires took hold and the singings of the, the church could be heard louder, and loudy, the Cathars left their life. And this is a monument to that very day at the base of Montsegur. So if you enjoyed the film, please do make a comment, uh, click on like and unsubscribe, and also on the little bell above to be informed of future videos. If you'd like to make a contribution to the making of these films, my PayPal and Patreon accounts are below. Tour information is at www.megalithictours.com. I hope to see you on a tour very soon, but in the meantime, have a truly megalithic time. <laughs>